So the stamp duty free-for-all ended on 30th of June. But what does this mean for the property market and UK property prices? Well, in this video, I'll share with you my predictions and thoughts for property prices for the rest of the year, inflation and also interest rates. So stay tuned. So my name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I've been investing and developing properties for the last 30 years. You may have seen me on the hit Sky TV show Property Elevator or attended one of our central London Baker Street property meets. Now this is my monthly update report, if you like, on the UK property market. And we've got a lot to talk about this month. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon. We put out new videos every week and they're all dedicated to keeping you up to date with what's going on in the property market. And don't forget to smash that like button. The stamp duty holiday, of course, came to an end on 30th of June. Up till 30th of June, if you're buying a property up to 500K, 500,000 pounds, and you were a homeowner, you paid no stamp duty. Now, from 1st of July to 30th of October, you'll be paying some stamp duty on a 500K purchase, which it, the stamp duty will amount to about 12,500. And then after 1st of October, on a 500,000 pound purchase, you'll be paying uh, um, 15,000 pound stamp duty. Now I've told you those figures for a reason because there are a lot of people out there saying hey it's simply because of the stamp duty saving um, that is the reason why property prices have gone up so much in the UK but that is wrong 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 wrong. UK house prices have risen 13.4 percent uh, to the period up till June this year. So on a £500,000 property, that is an increase of £67,000. So why would prices rise by £67,000 just for the sake of a £15,000 stamp duty saving? There has to be something more to explain why prices have risen than simply a stamp duty holiday. In my previous update videos, and I'll put some links here, I've explained why this has been happening, specifically because of inflation caused by excessive money printing. And if there is inflation in the economy, then prices will generally go up to match or exceed that rate of inflation. But how much will property prices go up? Well, I think there's plenty more room for growth. And that's because, of course, property in the UK is a finite commodity. Basically, we require 300,000 homes a year. We're only making 100,000. It's not just increasing population, but more single um, households, uh, divorce rates going up and people marrying later and that kind of thing, which means that there's more requirement for individual homes. But of course, prices can't rise forever, can they? I mean, people buy a home with a mortgage and of course you have to pay interest on the mortgages but then again interest rates are at record lows there's a recent article from the financial times which suggested that uh, the amount of uh, mortgage interest people are paying as a proportion of their monthly salaries is at their lowest level right now for the last decade now that is significant so that means that there is plenty of fuel in the tank to justify further price rises um, on mortgage affordability alone. One thing, of course, that always happens when prices rise is the FOMO effect, the fear of missing out on the party. You know, as prices rise, people fear that they will miss out from getting on the property ladder at all and often rush forward their buying decisions. So what we'll see in coming months are rising property prices. But that will just be uh, because there's inflation in the economy, there won't be any underlying change in the actual value of those properties. So I'm going to give you some predictions later on, on on exactly how much I think property prices will rise, but it's all linked to inflation. So what's the outlook for inflation? But first of all, if you're getting value from this video, make sure you smash that like button as well. It means more people will get to see it. But what is the outlook for inflation? Well, um, in the UK, a lot of uh, businesses and individuals have basically been hoarding cash because they haven't been able to spend it. Now, what gives rise to inflation is not just money printing, but it's printing a load of money and actually then people going out and spending it. It's the latter that hasn't quite happened yet but will happen as the economy opens up. So let's take a look at what's happened across the pond in the US of A. In 
in May of this year, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, their sort of uh, health advisory body, if you like, that advises central government, federal government, gave this piece of advice, which is fully vaccinated people can resume activities without wearing a mask or physical distancing. So they gave this advice to the central government, but of course the local states are able to sort of introduce local laws if they want to. But many states actually followed the central government's advice uh, and basically lockdown pretty much came to an end. So once these restrictions came to an end in states in the US, People went out there, spent their money, and what did we see? We see the US inflation rate hit 5.1%. So what does that mean for us in the UK? Of course, we're rapidly approaching our freedom date of July the 19th. And uh, Andy Haldane, who was uh, chief economist at the Bank of England, who's left his job uh, just last week, uh, gave a little speech and where he's basically saying just this. So this is what he's saying. He's basically talking about the slight easing of restrictions that we had in May, um, which he's saying has already is resulted um, in economic rebound. And this would further accelerate uh, when the government removes all restrictions on July the 19th. Holdane goes further to predict uh, that inflation in the UK will, will touch 4% uh, by Christmas. I personally think inflation will be a little bit higher than this. When July the 19th comes and it's, and it's Freedom Day, well, that's when people will be starting spending a, an awful lot more and the velocity of money in the economy will increase and therefore the inflation rate will increase too. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but what I wanted to really tell you about was what is the most exciting opportunity in property right now, and that is repurposing defunct commercial buildings to residential use. Now, most people don't really know where to start, what to look for, and how to exploit these opportunities, and that's why I've prepared 90 minutes of free training for you to get you started on this wonderful journey. You can register for this free training at property-workshop.com. Join me on that free training, and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the video. There's a lot more confidence now among businesses that restrictions will genuinely uh, be lifted on the 19th. We've got rid of this Hancock guy who was absolute dog's breakfast, quite frankly, as far as uh, being exceptionally hawkish and overly cautious on opening up the economy. Everything that the new health secretary, Sajid Javid, has said has been on the, on the, on the lines of, well, look, We've got to live with coronavirus, we've got to manage it, but the economy must open up. That has already started to impact the mood music in the business community. And for consumers, let's not forget the impact of England doing well in the football. Now normally I don't give a stuff about what happens in the football, but what happens when England do particularly well is that there's always a feel-good factor, which means that people spend more money in the economy and that has a positive effect on the economy. This happened in 1966 when England won the World Cup and also more recently in 96 when England reached the semi-finals of the Euro tournament. You do have to go back a long way to find evidence of uh, past England wins in football, but you know, that's the statistics for you. And it's not just England's performance on the pitch that's going to make a big difference. It is actually the psychological effect of people seeing news footage of crowds in stadiums, you know, returning back to normality. You also see those news reports of people in pubs uh, watching on big screens, celebrating, uh, socialising, hugging um, and enjoying the England win. This all has a psychological effect that normality and pre-Covid life is returning. So if anything, as the economy opens up on July the 19th, I do see inflation in the short term as spiking up a little bit. But what will happen to interest rates? You know, normally, of course, uh, what do they do if inflation starts to spike? They put up interest rates, don't they? That would be a bit of a worry. But you know, this time things are different. Things are different around the world. You know, if you look at inflation 
Um, yes, it's going to go up in this country, but relative to other countries and other major countries in the world, it will be not much different to the rest. Normally, interest rates do rise if inflation in our country goes up disproportionately compared to our competitors. And of course, this time round also, there isn't enough capacity to increase interest rates. Now just take a look at this graph. What this shows is the percentage of debt as a proportion to GDP. And we've never had this before. We're now, uh, our national debt, if you like, is 100% uh, is of our GDP. It has never been so high. And that means that increasing interest rates will have a massive effect on public finances, and in, partic in particular, repaying government debt. So I think what we'll see is that they will resist the temptation to increase interest rates. They'll probably try to ride out this inflationary spike, saying it's just a temporary blip and they're expecting it to go down in six or seven months. I don't know whether that's true or not. It's too far out and into the future to make those sort of predictions or assessments. But I think that's what they will say. So if interest rates do stay low, I think it will add further fuel to the uh, property prices fire. And that's because if interest rates are low, what that means is people with cash, people with funds, are often buying or investing in government bonds and government treasury gilts and that kind of thing. Now the returns on those are linked to interest rates and those are at historic lows. Now government treasury gilts and that kind of thing, these are seen as ultra safe investments. So investing in anything else, in any other type of assets, the returns and risks are always pegged or compared to doing something ultra safe which is the return on uh, government bonds. Now, in times when interest rates are high and the rates on those sort of government securities are high, then you tend to find that for you to get out of bed, for you to take your investment out of some ultra safe uh, government bond and put it in something else like property, you expect a much higher return. So what tends to happen is when um, when, when, when the returns on government bonds are higher, the returns on other assets have to be higher still to justify the increased risks in investing in those. At the moment, what we're seeing is that the returns on government securities are ultra, ultra low. By the way, do smash that like button. It means more people like you get to see this particular video. So in a nutshell, the fact that there's virtually zero returns on government bonds mean that people with cash are chasing higher returns. And one asset class that always is attractive is real estate. So there are a lot of people attracted to real estate. And furthermore, with inflation, in times of inflation, real estate is always a good hedge against inflation, particularly when you purchase it in a leveraged way. So with government bonds and things returning ultra low returns, people with cash have to chase uh, better returns, particularly if they want to outpace inflation and maintain the value of their cash holdings. So in that uh, chase, if you like, for other asset classes which will outperform government bonds, property of course is a um, surefire uh, first port of call uh, for those sort of people. So that makes property even more attractive at times like these. But I know what you're saying. You read the media and they're already predicting the articles flying around in various bits of the press saying property prices are going to fall, property prices are going to crash, blah, blah, blah. But remember, bad news always sells, it creates headlines. Uh, I mean, look at this video. The thumbnail on this video had a crash and a question mark on it. You clicked it, right? So bad news grabs attention. But the point is to look at the article, the detail behind the actual headline. What you'll actually see is they're talking about the rate of growth falling. They're not talking about a fall in property prices. They're saying, well, if it's growing by three, four, five, six percent, instead of growing by as much, it's still going to grow, but by a lesser percentage. A fall in growth of house prices is a completely different thing to an actual fall in house prices. So look at the data uh, and the text of, uh, behind the headline rather than just the headline.
And as I said, a fall in the rate of growth of house prices is expected because many people will have brought forward their purchasing decisions before the 30th of June to capitalise on the SDLT holiday. So transactions that would normally have taken place in, Ju in July and August have taken place a little bit earlier, so there'll be less volume in the of transactional activity in the next couple of months, and that will mean the rate of house price growth will fall a little bit. But that's a completely different story um, from actual house price falls, because remember the underlying trends of inflation and also uh, very, very low returns on government bonds underpinning the value of uh, residential real estate. So let's just summarise now and hit you with my views on where the property market's going over the next few months. We're going to see a slight fall in transactional volumes over the next couple of months, as I said. Uh, you're going to see a fall in the rate of house price growth. Uh, for the next couple of months, but then it will start to gather pace again. That's simply because property, particularly leveraged property, is the ultimate hedge against inflation. And we know that inflation is going to run uh, a little bit. We don't know whether it's going to be a permanent thing or whether it's going to be a genie out the bottle effect and we're going to have double digit inflation next year. We don't know that yet. The money is on um, actually this being a temporary blip in inflation which is going to ride out for the rest of the year. So we could see as the economy loosens up and the velocity of money increases it go up to 5%. That sort of stuff will mean that property prices um, cannot be south of where they are today. It's as simple as that. It, doesn't, it just doesn't happen like that. So those are my views. I hope you found them interesting and entertaining. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We put out new videos each and every week, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified of our next release. See you guys in the next video. What is the number one strategy for wealth creation in property? right now? Well, it's converting commercial buildings to residential use. And I'm running a free 90-minute masterclass to take you through how you can get started with this unique gold rush opportunity. You see, residential property prices are rising quite fast right now and will continue to rise for the next few years. Meanwhile, commercial property is actually in oversupply and the price of things like offices and shops is actually depressed. So if you know what you're looking for, you can acquire these defunct commercial buildings, convert them to residential use and benefit from that instant value uplift. So I'm Rajan Bhattacharya. I've been converting commercial buildings to residential use since 2006. Back then it was hard because we had to do it through full planning permission. But in 2013, they brought in permitted development, which is a light touch um, planning regime, which allows you to do things with a lot more certainty than the vague planning system. But even those rules are gonna get a whole lot simpler because you're gonna be able to do a whole lot more with a lot more commercial property types without having to go through full planning permission. Now, if you know what you can do with commercial property and what types of commercial property to look for, and also how to get these deals funded, then you've got all the ingredients to successfully implement this strategy and create a lot of wealth for yourself over the next few years. So click on the link below and join me on the next 90 minute free masterclass and I'll get you ready for this new world of opportunity that's unfolding on the 1st of August this year when these simplified permitted development rules come in.